again, children of God. Hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed our session last week as we talked about what are we going to see in heaven, what to expect in heaven. But right now, we are going to have a new topic for you, and we're going to dive into that soon. But we're, first off, we're going to worship first because we have to give glory to God first because He deserves all the glory, all the praise. All, all worship belongs only to our Father God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Before we start, I want to thank our Abba Father for providing all of this. It's by all this that it's made possible because there's nothing impossible with the Lord. And of course, thank you to Dr. Joseph Nasralia that he, he allows himself to be used by the Lord. And by, by that, he is given a platform. And, and it's by this platform that we get to preach about the Lord, the Lord, hallelujah, and the word. Well, let's worship God. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord oh come holy spirit come holy spirit holy spirit you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome. By your presence, Lord, oh Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, 
God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. As we ask the Holy Spirit to come into our midst, let the Holy Spirit anoint our lips. We long for the anointing of the Holy Spirit so we can say the right words. As it said in Scripture, in the book of Luke, that in times like this, that it's the Holy Spirit who will speak for us. He will use our mouths to speak the truth because He is the Spirit of truth. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you guide our session right now. Father God, give us the direction. Jesus, give us the inspiration. And Holy Spirit, give us the conviction. Hallelujah. All this we lift up to you, Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's session. Right now, we're going to talk about something different. It's probably something uh, what believers and new believers are going to experience soon. So the title for this topic, and it's not much of a title, it's more of a phrase. It's that a holy life doesn't guarantee a good life. Mm. I know, shocking. Very shocking. Like, we thought that when we followed God and when we gave our life to, Christ, to Jesus and when we submit to the Holy Spirit, we're going to be like, oh, we are going to have a problem-free life. <laughs> and that's a big no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> because following Jesus comes with a sacrifice. Mm. The same way He sacrificed Himself for us. Amen. He actually did that sacrifice for us. He limited His power because it says in Scripture and it's emphasized so much that Jesus is the, has the same equality with God. He is this, in the same, same omnipotent God, omnipresent, omniscient, but He limited His power to become human so He can show us the way. And He actually... And actually, before we get into, because I can actually keep going now, but before we dive into that, that's going to be our main subject. How come, it's, how come living a holy life doesn't guarantee a good life? I mean, we're supposed, when we follow God, we're supposed to have like, uh, no more stress, right? Mm. We're, not, we're not supposed to be having this because, because uh, probably the advertisement says, follow God, you're good now. No, it doesn't say that. Because Jesus actually emphasized in the book of Matthew, and he says there that foxes have dens, and, and uh, uh, I forgot the rest of the verse, but it says there that if you follow Jesus, it's not going to guarantee a good life because it's, he says there that the Son of Man will not have a place to lay his head. Meaning, it, Jesus emphasizing that he won't even have a roof over his head to protect him while he was still human. And that's one of the costs of following God. And we're going to dive into that with my fellow uh, brothers, uh, Pastor Mark and Brother Arthur. So let me ask you this question first to get, in, get into the topic. How do we live a holy life? Like, what is the main ingredient or the main procedure to live a holy life? What do you think, Pastor Mark? Mm-hmm. The main thing to live a holy life is to understand what that means mm -hmm. and where it comes from. Yes. Holy means set aside, mm -hmm. consecrated, set aside for a designated mm -hmm. purpose. In the context of, of, of God's Word in the Bible, we do that through a relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the anointing of His Holy Spirit. He sets us, us aside as His children, separated from the world mm -hmm. and its patterns of sin Amen. and its destiny where that brings us. Mm -hmm. Brother Art? I mean, like, what past, what, like what Pastor Mark said, uh, being a relationship with God and following the commandments of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meaning like, living a, a sinless life. But in, in this earth, we cannot really live a sinless life uh, because temptation is there. Mm -hmm. Um, like all all sorts of sin is there, but 
just following the basic instructions in the Bible, which is repenting of your sins, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's for me um, how living a holy life is. Amen. That's true. That's all uh, what my two brothers said is true. For me, it's actually submission to the Holy Spirit. Because mm -hmm. uh, the Holy Spirit only wants the best for us. And He wants us to live a holy life, to live a sinless life. But like what Brother Arthur said, we can't live a sinless life unless we submit to Jesus. And Amen. it's hard because a lot of temptations, yes, just looking up stuff in the internet, you'll get a lot of temptation. Even if you're not even looking for temptation, temptation will find you. That's why you have to always find Jesus when you find a temptation because you have to separate. Because pa Pastor Mark says, to live a holy life, you have to be separated. And one of the words for being separated is sanctification. You have to be separated. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And one of, that's one of the ways to live a holy life is when you actually, for me, it's to submit to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will only guide you to where God wants you to be. And if you follow God's will, then you're living a holy life. What, because what, what does Jesus say in John chapter 14, verse 15? If you love me, you keep my commands. That's it. So my second question is this, and I pretty much, you pretty much covered it in the first question, but I'm going to ask it again. Anyway, how do we follow Christ properly? How about your brother Art? How do we follow Jesus Christ properly? By really having a relationship with Him. Amen. And like I said earlier, obeying God's Word and really diving into having a, com having a communion with Him, basically. Having, uh, spending time with Him, basically, basically all that. And then you will see the, re the results that the Lord will really manifest within you. Mm -hmm. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit will really manifest. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we brought up that subject of, of submission. And, uh, and, and, and that's, uh, for me, a, a beginning first step. There comes a place where it grows deeper because Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, I'll come in with you. He's talking about the believer and our lives. We allow him to come into our lives. His Holy Spirit takes up residence us mm -hmm. in us, and he becomes our navigational instrument, guiding us into the mm -hmm. right way. But then we may have skeletons in certain closets. We let them in the front door. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Lord, don't go back in that bedroom back there i got secret things right oh no you know what he's going to do he's going to go knock on that door too mm -hmm. hey i know what's in here let, mm -hmm. will you, will, but will you let me in mm -hmm. he could just go in there but he doesn't he's the perfect gentleman it takes in us mm -hmm. surrender yes. something more than just submission a mm -hmm. deeper place lord not just Amen. the front door it's all yours N no skeletons in my closet and nothing's off limits the entire dwelling place I surrender. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's, oh my gosh, that's, I think we can end the session there. <laughs> <It's> so powerful. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, that's true because uh, you have to let Jesus into every aspect of your life. You're gonna, you can't be like, oh, on Sunday, here I am, Lord. This is me on Sunday. And then when you leave church, oh wait, I don't want, I don't want the Lord to see me on, out of church like this. Like, I'm still <laughs> living the world. Like, because what does it say in, uh, uh, Romans chapter 12, if I'm not mistaken. So we have to, don't, we should not be in the pattern of the world anymore. We have to be transformed with the renewing yes. of our minds because we have to be we have to be sanctified. Because if we're still living in the pattern of the world, then we are not exactly following Jesus properly. Then are we? Because you are you are compromising your life with Jesus, your life meaning your worldly life. And God did not call you to live a worldly life. He called you to have a holy life. That's what his plan is for us, to live a holy life. Although, here's the thing. He called us to have free will. Because to love is to have free will. He, God won't force you to love him or to follow him. It has to be your own choice. That is the concept of free will. Because free will says that you are, you are free to do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. But the thing is, it's up to you to love God. And on this next question, we are going to dive into the topic. We, it's going to be a really hard topic, but it has to be said. So how come if we live a holy life, we practically go to church, we practically do a lot of Bible studies, we listen to a lot of preaching, a lot of worship music, we are actually on fire for God, but in the end, how come we still don't get a, the best life? 
on earth. Mm. Okay, I'm going to let that sink in because first off, you have to wonder, didn't God promise take the take delight in me and then I will give you the desires of your heart? And yet, all these problems still kept coming. Huh, sounds familiar. What do you think, Brother Art? Can I answer the question? Because the Lord never promised a perfect life mm. until we're in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we're living on earth, we're still, uh, we're still, we're still gonna be facing trials because the world is not a, it's not a perfect world. The earth is not a perfect, perfect world because the enemy is still manifesting within the world. Mm. So the, it's the enemy throwing those problems. Mm -hmm. It's the enemy that's putting you down. Mm -hmm. So that's yes, true. amen. How about you, Pastor Mark? Mm -hmm. We have to understand that we live in a broken and hurting world. Yes. And we're living under the consequences of sin. Mm -hmm. But our faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, brings forth yes. the substance Confidence. and evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. And so we're still living in this world, but the fullness of the release from it is going to come upon our glorification. But where our focus has to be is on Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The psalmist in Psalm 73 talked about seeing the wicked prosper. And it talks about that again and again in Psalms. And, I, and truthfully, I have wrestled with that over and over again. But listen to what the psalmist says. He's talking about, oh, they did this and, and, and they don't have any problems with their bodies and, and they get to do so good. Why are the wicked like that? And we're your people, but we don't get to be like that. And then he says in Psalm 73, verse 16, when I tried to under, understand all this, it troubled me deeply till I entered the sanctuary of God, mm. then I understood their final destiny. When we understand their final destiny and our final destiny, it gives us that hope that the world doesn't have. We, ha we have that hope that goes beyond the grave, but when we understand their final destiny, it sh should also invoke in us a compassion for the lost and for them. Mm -hmm. There are people going to hell mm -hmm. and we can speak out on it and share the love of Christ with them. Hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. And you mentioned uh, Psalm 73, yes, right? Yes, yes. That actually has one of my favorite verses, which is actually in 26, where it says, My health may fail, my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. That's one of my most favorite verses in Psalms. Yeah, what my two brothers says is actually true. We are not going to be guaranteed a good life. No. But if you, if you remain holy, and if holiness gives you a good life, then praise God. Amen. But if you, but if if you see holiness as something like a burden, then something has to be, something has to happen between you and the Lord. Like you have to meditate. Like if this holiness, but if this holy life is causing you more burden, then something's wrong there. Because the reason why God is calling you to be holy is because He wants you to be separated from this world. Because what does it say in Scripture? The God of this age, meaning Satan, has blinded the believers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even say that God is the God of this world, but it says God, the God, small g, of this world, meaning the enemy. And how come we're still going to encounter problems? Let's look at the example of the, one of the famous characters in the Bible, which is Job. He's probably one of the wealthiest and probably one of the most holiest men during his time. But then when suddenly that enemy took everything from him, he lost his business. He lost his family, his children. Everything was taken from him. He got sick a lot of times. And even his friends were trying to help him, but it's in a way of condemnation. So it's actually, it actually brought him down more. So, so how do we relate this? What happened when, G when Job sought the Lord more? Because Job was human. He asked questions. God, why is this happening to me? Have I not lived a good life? Have I, have I not been faithful to you? He asked God these questions. And God showed him the answers if you read more on the book of Job. The, the reason why I'm using this example is even Job himself, the, probably one of the most, uh, the people who most loves God, he still encountered a lot of hardships. And yet, look, because of his faithfulness, he prospered in the end. Even the apostles themselves, 
who are practically preaching Jesus all around the world at that time, they had the, mo the most suffering of all. Because Jesus, what did Jesus say? You will get, you will, blessed are you if you suffer for my sake. And Jesus actually said that, that we are going to be suffering. But here's the thing. In your suffering, you're actually on the road to salvation already. That's going to be your road to, to salvation. Because the road to salvation means the enemy will throw, as Brother Arthur said, he will throw more temptations, more problems to you, more and more. Because I always say, the more holier you get, the more the enemy will work triple time, double time, just to get you back into the world. Because he doesn't want you to live a holy life. He wants you to always stay in the world. That's why we're saying, we're saying this topic is because we want you guys to know that it may not be a, a very good life as a Christian, but you'll have a fulfilled life because Jesus will be with you. Like in the concept of marriage, there has to be three people in a marriage. I know, shocking, third party? No, nope, not a third party. The third person should be Jesus. Man, wife, and Jesus at the center. Because if you, like, if you go into marriage without Jesus, there's going to be a lot of problems. If you truly have Jesus in your heart, despite those problems, you'll be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Because we, we relate an example like uh, St. Paul. He got in prison a lot of times. But the thing is, even in prison, he wrote, he wrote four of the letters in prison. And he was praising and worshiping mm -hmm. in prison. How do you do that? Despite all the suffering, you're still worshiping God. Before we end, you want to share an experience where you're, start, you're starting to think like, how come everything, this is happening to me even though I'm worshiping, even though I'm following God properly? Why is all this bad stuff happening to me still? Brother Art. For me, um, basically when... There are still times where I still feel like depressed, I feel really sad, or there's just a lot of problems just being thrown in my way. Um, I, I would, some, some, there are times that I would really question, like, what am I doing wrong? What, am, what is going on? Like, I'm doing everything for the Lord, but it's still happening, like, the, all these problems. It's, um, trials is happening, but they, oh, I always remember at the back of my mind that the Lord never promised a perfect life here on earth. Mm. But as long as we're worshiping Him and we're following Him, the Lord is always there to help you. Mm -hmm. The whole Lord is always there to help me overcome all the odds. Amen. Amen. Mark? Mm -hmm. I, I have learned that we need to expect persecution. Yes. If the devil had us in his hand and he was dragging our soul to hell and we became liberated from that and we got heaven bound, he's not going to just let us go so easy. Yes. And if we stand up and we begin to tell others about the way to salvation, we're a threat to the enemy. Mm -hmm. When you are a threat to somebody, you're not going to go unnoticed. They're going to try to do things. I had pretensions coming into Christianity that they lived a, a, a life without trouble, but it's not true. And so we, we must tell others. But you know, Scripture tells us in, in the Beatitudes, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, Blessed are those who are persecuted for yes. righteousness sake, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yep. And it goes on a couple of verses later. It says, Rejoice and be, be glad, because great is your reward yes. in heaven. Mm -hmm. It's not all without reason. Mm -hmm. There's a final destiny in it all, and it's going to work out great. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It says in Scripture also, blessed are, is the one who endures to the end. Because if you, if you think that we're going to go through these sufferings alone, you're wrong. Only because God is going to be with you all throughout. The reason why these sufferings happen in the same way that Job suffered is, because, is, to, is for God to show His compassion to us. 
that even in these struggles, He's still with us, no matter what happens. What does it say in Psalms, chapter 46, verse 10? Be still and know that I am God. Be still. When it seems like the problem is escalating, hold on. God is there. Don't forget that. And actually, this suffering, all these sufferings, will give you more time with the Lord because you get to hang on to Him more. When I broke up with my ex like four years ago or three years ago, I held on to God more. That's why I was able to move on so quickly. A lot of people thought I moved on because I didn't love my ex. I did. But the thing is, the reason I was able to move on very quickly is because God was with me throughout that. And he said, you're with me, now I'll help you. And I gave more time with the Lord on that. So there is also joy in the suffering. Never forget that. Before we end, I want to pray for you guys because right now, there are some believers there are starting to question their faith that whether they made a good decision to follow Jesus. But I'm here to tell you that when you accepted Jesus in your heart, you made the best decision and the most 100% best decision of your life. And right now, I want to pray for you. Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, to all who's watching here, Lord, help them. That when they encounter these kind of persecutions and their sufferings, that their faith will not falter and their faith will not waver, Lord. That in these sufferings that they're going to get, Lord, they will prosper. They will gain more confidence in you, Jesus. Because it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, that faith is confidence, what we don't see. Because even if these people see the sufferings right now, it's nothing compared to the glory that's going to come. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, our present suffering is nothing compared to the glory that's coming. Hallelujah. And we declare that to all believers, especially the ones who are starting to question God. I pray that they may find shelter in you, Jesus, and they may find new, something new in you, Jesus, because you make all things new, Jesus, all the time. We give you our praise and worship, Lord. We lift up all believers who are watching this and even non-believers who are watching this right now. We lift them up to you that you come to know them, Jesus, and they come to know you. Hallelujah. We give you our praise and worship, Lord. We love you, Jesus. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.